Hey, this is Mike Kruko with the Giants, and you're watching Bay Area Sports Wrap. Meet. About Solaire weeding off, is Fitzgerald going to weed off now for the time being, or how do you anticipate that going? Well, yeah, he's done well enough to warrant it at this point. But again, we'll try to run the best lineup we can. This is kind of a heavy lineup for a left-handed pitcher. We'll see what happens once we get a righty, but he's done well enough. He's moved from the nine hole to the one hole, so he's been everywhere in between as well. You're pretty familiar with Mark Canna's game. Uh, what kind of uh, skill or ability does he bring to the roster? Lineup? Yeah, I think it's more than just kind of looking at his numbers. He's, you know, he's a pretty tenacious player. He's the kind of guy that you don't particularly care for on the other side, and you love him when he's on your team. And he's, you know, he's so excited about coming back to the Bay Area. He went to high school here. He went to college here. He played for the A's. There's just a lot to like about him and, you know, how he feels about the Bay Area. So I know he's ecstatic about coming back. Sometimes those things inspire you a little bit, too. I mean, his numbers maybe recently haven't looked great. You know, maybe we, we target him to to play a little bit more against left-handed pitching where he's done really well. But when you're inspired, you know, sometimes things can pick up and he's got some, you know, not only guys on the coaching staff he knows, you know, Chapman he played with and so forth. So I think he's he's a nice pickup for us. Bob, when you trade away two guys that are established major leaguers and contributing to this run, what message do you send to your clubhouse that you guys are still fighting for a postseason spot and not just kicking it to next year? Well, I think the last you know, acquisition kind of made it look clearer what we were trying to do. So as Farhan said, our, our younger players have played really well for us this year, and it's a little bit about that. It's also about, you know, Hayden Birdsong getting a, a, a further run here. Um, you know, Marco's going to come up and get some at-bats too. Mark Cannon, we're trying to, you know, he's led off as well at times not saying he's going to but you you know it, it's it's kind of we've a little bit's gone away but we've also brought some back and our younger players have been really important to us this year and, and have had a lot of success you know including wisely too we haven't talked a little bit about wisely he's done well for us too so you look at the lineup today it's against the lefty we got five of five of our younger players the rookies in the lineups today and they've done well for us bob when you can keep a guy like snell what kind of boost does that give your clubhouse well, that's kind of what, you know, we've been chasing this for a while to get to our rotation. We're trying to get Blake to where he's in a good place. He's in a great place now. Um, so I think the the overall look is that we've kept our rotation pretty much intact, which tells our team, you know, we're we're in this to, you know, to, to win right now. Now we're three games back or whatever it is. I'm not one for fan graphs and looking at percentages. You can win five or six games in a row and it completely turns around. I mean, where we were when we came home and, and after winning four games, it looks a lot, lot different. So I'm more in that school that things can change in a hurry if you can sustain a run. A couple things, Bob. First, just the DH spot overall. How do you look at it? Do you think you're going to rotate people through it a little bit more? It gives us the, the option to, and if some guys, someone's banged up a little bit, you know, Chapman's out there every day, we could play Casey at third and give him an at-bat. But I think it allows us to, to do some different things. Um, but Marco's going to get some at-bats. And he's been swinging great in AAA. He's in there tonight. I think it takes a little off his plate maybe here, too, at the big league level to just focus on hitting, which might be good for him, too. And then you gain some confidence, and it, it works his way into the field as well. So, you know, one of the reasons this, this was done was to get Marco here and get him some at-bats. And then what does uh, the Canna acquisition, what is that going to mean for Matos? Uh, does he really have to put on another show at AAA to get another opportunity, or how do you sort of see his path at this point? Uh, well, it, it gets in the way a little bit right now. doesn't mean in the future, and you never know what happens as far as injuries or whatever. But Mark can play the corners. He's actually played center field before, too, and he can play first base. So he's a good fit for us. But, you know, Luis isn't here right now. We'll see what September brings. We can add to it, not necessarily saying he's going to be here, but it's another guy we have in our system that we feel good about that had a nice run here as well. So it's in him. Bob, from a manager's standpoint, is this the point in the season that you dread the most? And then once it's over, are you immediately happy because you and I can just focus on winning games? You mean this day? Yeah. Look, because, you know, you're, you're together for a long period of time. And, you know, whether it was Jorge, who everybody loves here, you know, it's, it's, he's moving to a place he's been before in Atlanta. But, you know, where you, you, when you're invested in guys every day and you're around them every day, it, it can be a sad day. You know, Alex 
was with the team last year. He was around us a lot. He's influential in the clubhouse. So that, you know, those type of things just on a personal standpoint. But then the next day you move on, you know, and, and we've, we've brought some players in too and we've created a path for some really good players from within our organization as well. So we'll move on from this. I think any team goes through this at, at this point in time, whether they're adding or subtracting. And we've done a little bit of both today. Um, Bob, if you're going to make a play on playoff push, obviously the pitching stats would be a big part of right. that. With uh, Harrison and Birdsong, they're both approaching you know career highs and in innings or professional career highs and in innings. Is the plan to kind of keep them in the rotation though every week the rest of the year, or do you anticipate they might need to have you know their workloads rolled back or even shut down in an extreme case? Yeah, as we sit here right now, yeah, and we've had some off days and we've given a little bit of an extended break at least to Harry. So we'll monitor it, whether it's a, a, an inning less on a particular day, if we think they're a little bit taxed, if, you know, we'll use our off days to give everybody a, a you know, an extra a extra day, and then we'll monitor, you know, how we think they're pitching and how they're holding up. You know, Harry's pitching his best baseball right now. So he went through a little bit of a period where, you know, it wasn't great for him, but it's never a straight line. And, and right now he's he's throwing the ball really well, and his, his velo's, you know, a little bit higher than we saw it early on, too. So we'll just monitor these things as we go along. And then last year, you know, Camille Duvall is one of the best closers in baseball. It's been kind of a struggle at times this year. Uh, how do you, you know, these next couple months kind of get him back up to that level that we saw him at last year? It'd be nice to get him in some consistent save opportunities. This entire year has been, you know, not the best for him. You know, he's really incentivized for being in there in save situations. There was a period of time... It felt like he was never in there in a safe situation, you know, whether it was coming or down game, whether it was coming in in an extra inning game, whether it was, you know, five or six runs, you know, closers are a little different breed. So I think we get him some consistent opportunities and save some save situations. Um, I think he'll be that much better. He's a pretty talented guy. I'm uh, just curious, Bob, with all these trades that were made today, do you have much input on how, how this goes about, or is it just all done by Farhan and the guys in the front office? Oh, no, he, he I, I, last couple of days we've, we've talked a lot. I think I even started bothering him a little bit yesterday. I actually thought the deadline was yesterday, not today. So I really was bothering him yesterday, and he had to tell me it's actually tomorrow. So I backed off a little bit. Bob, a little bit of a bigger picture, but these are the last two Bay Bridge Series games in San yeah. Francisco, and there's two more in Oakland. I guess just overall your thoughts on that and – Obviously, you're a Bayer guy, so it means a lot to you, too. Yeah, there's gonna, it's a, it'll be a different feeling. It, it, even when I just walked out there a little while ago to see the green across the other side, of, that's weird. Um, but for this to be the last year of it, when, it, to me, I grew up with it. A lot of people did. A lot of people tonight will have as well. It's different. It's a little bit sad. So I think both teams are going to be incentivized to play really well and play hard and you know, especially in the last two games in Oakland, it'll be the last two games in that ballpark. So there's there's a little bit more feeling to it for sure. Hi, y'all. I'm NFL reporter Jen Hale. You are watching Bay Area Sports Wrap. Please give my friend a like and follow his channel on YouTube. He does a fantastic job.